GCI creed, the act and the act of national cohesion and globalization. Art is a visual or finished process or endpoint of an intentional act. Why act is an action or an effort. This could be intentional or algorithmic for consistent results. If action is not intentional, the result is random or futile. In the words of Dwight Eisenhower, the 34th President of the United States, a people that values its privileges above its principles soon loses both. This means that everyone, from those in the position of authority or in government to those at the grassroots level in a nation, should prioritize common national goal or purpose beyond personal or individual interests. This makes a beautiful art. Now, what kind of art could create this art? Oh, I discovered an actionable algorithm in a set of principles ascribed to JCI, usually called JCI Creed. You may want to ask, what is JCI? I will leave that for you to Google, but what is important here is the JCI Creed is beyond an organization. It's an ageless way of life beyond any race or culture and of high global relevance. What are these? Faith in God gives meaning and purpose to human life. The world is a diverse place with several individuals, with several viewpoints or life opinions. Therefore, religion should not be a source of national or global discord, rather a source of solemn guidance towards pursuing a path of peace. The brotherhood of man transcends the sovereignty of nations. They are different constituents of a nation, by extension, globalization. National cohesion could be achieved from respecting all constituents like tribes or even race. Humanity and good neighborliness should break beyond the shackles of xenophobia, racism, tribalism, and even sexism. In local contexts, no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any other Nigerian, both within and outside Nigeria. Economic justice can best be won by free men through inter free enterprise. Economic justice is the idea that the economy will be more successful if it is fairer, universal basic income, income equality by gender and race, equal opportunity for employment and credit, and allowing all to reach their full potential are all tenets of economic justice. When economic justice is attained, then social justice can, could easily be attained. Government should be of laws rather than of men. It is important for institutions to grow stronger than any individual within the ambit of the extant laws or constitu constitutions. Earth's great treasure lies in the human personality. Human capital development is more important than natural resources and very key to national development and global progression. Service to humanity is the best work of life. In whatever things we do, we should always be respectful, humane, empathic and compassionate in dealing with other individuals. It is good for us to be our neighbor's keeper. Acting out these principles would result to the beautiful act of national cohesion for global influence. Well, Felix, I, I, you know, when I saw the, when I heard all the things you said about, you know, tribalism and everything, I, I think for me, one point that came um, top of my mind is that generational cohesion, because there's, there's a generation that thinks that their approach and their ways are better than the other generation. I mean, we saw the viral videos about the, the flogging of the students. Um, um, you know, in that environment, it could be seen as it's okay to flog them. I don't still even know what they have done, uh, what they actually did to merit that. But it gets to that point where we also begin to understand that um, while I'm not an advocate of if they have done anything that is out of place, I am not in support of what they have done if it is out of place in that uh, uh, place. But maybe they also need to understand that the, uh, the way of meting out those punishments may not necessarily um, promote cohesion because it is one generation against the other. Somebody issued that instruction. Some persons are seeing it as they are the ones at the receiving end. So we have to also create that level of balance 
in terms of how we, you know, our approach to do, doing things. So I'm, I'm just trying to say it's not just about, you know, the government and the people. It's also, it can also be about we and we, you know, a generation, uh, uh, Gen X to Gen Y, Gen Y to Gen Z, you know, we, we need to get to that point where we, we are very understanding. Well, I absolutely agree with you. And I, I, and I feel, I mean, two things that jumped at me at the creed, you know, which is very voluminous, but also very, you know, instructive. First is systems. We talked about this earlier. We talked about building systems. And, I mean, what comes to my mind easily is an election that was held somewhere, you know, in the world recently. And the president thought, you know, he could basically, you know, do what he liked. But the system basically just flushed him out. That's what you do when you build systems that last. The systems overrun the people, I mean, or are bigger than the people, right? The other thing is also people. Talk about human development. It's one of the most important investments in Earth because no matter how big your systems are, you still need humans to run the systems. So the investment in human capital development is also one of the most important, you know, investments you know, well, can make on Earth. Just before Victor comes in, you know, I said something that religion should not be a source of discord. Now, the question you posed, those students were flogged because they said it was against Islamic principle for them to go and drink. Now, in this same country, a particular state in Nigeria, if um, alcohol is being sent into that state, the governor will seize it through his religious police and they will destroy it. And this same governor or this same government, we collect VAT or proceeds of VAT from the government, where these alcohol companies pay to the government. So I'm, I'm not against, I'm not advocating for drinking or no drinking based on your religious um, belief, but why don't we have healthy conversations to discuss these things, to play out our policies, so that it's not going to be a room for discord, religiously speaking. Yeah. So, Ajema, I want to say something before Victor comes up. Um, well, I'm very familiar with JCI. I have quite a number of friends that are into the organization, and my sister is so passionate about JCI. But I must applaud their ethics, which, you know, for me, it talks about humanity, it talks about governance, talk about institution, it talks about brotherhood. And truly, most of these things, if we say we haven't heard it before, we are just, you know, fooling ourselves. But in Nigeria as a whole, we've not been able to replicate this strong foundation into our system. If only we can be introspective and, you know, and look at ourselves and say, some of these things are the things we need. You guys are talking about religion. You're talking about the hypocrisy of collecting the financial benefits of alcohol, while on the other hand, you're burning them down. This shows that we do not have a true value system. Because if you're against something, Nigerians will say, own it with your chest. Come out and say, I'm against it and I'm not going to have any, any naira from this kind of activity. But no, what do we do? We collect the money and, you know, come out in public and chastise the products that is actually generating the funds. So if at all, the minimum that we can do as a society, I look at the fundamental um, ethos of JCI and try and invite them. Look at uh, brotherliness and strong institutions, institutions that are not tailored made to man, strong laws. So whether you're rich, whether you're poor, wherever you are in the class of society, equal laws. All right, apply. thank you very much. Uh, Victor, just before we wrap up, you can chip in something, please. So the only thing I'm chipping in is we need to invest in people. People will build the systems, the institutions, and, you know, we need to really invest in human capital. Very important. Thank you very much. Right. Peter wraps up the conversation after the break.